I'm Blanca Valls Perez. I'm a family and community doctor working in, in Granada in the south of Spain. I belong to an association called La Cabecera that we support primary healthcare as a doctor that works in a public health system. I'm trying with my team in the healthcare center to have a real accessibility for everyone in our community not just for people with the Spanish or European passport, but for everyone. And I'm very happy to, to be part of this project and uh, to, to talk now with Samer. Hello everyone, this is Samer Jabour. I'm uh, calling from Lebanon. I'm um, a professor in this Faculty of Health Sciences at the American University of Beirut, which is a school of public health. I work in the areas of public health in the Arab world, uh, chronic conditions and uh, now mostly in the area of war, conflict and health. Um, so I look forward to um, starting the conversation with you. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Uh, How are you? I'm good, Blanca. How are you? That's all I know about you, just the first name, Blanca. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to be in this conversation also. Yes, likewise, too. likewise. Where are you, Blanca? I'm in Granada. Granada is a city in the south of Spain. Oh, wonderful. Uh, very close to the Mediterranean Sea. I work in, uh, in Granada in a little healthcare center uh -huh. uh, in the same neighborhood as, uh, as I live. So I am lucky that I can work uh, next to the house. Yes, I've been there. It's a wonderful city. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm in Beirut, uh, Lebanon, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm actually, um, you're at home, but I'm in the office right now. I work in this faculty called uh, the Faculty of Health Sciences, which is a school of public health. It's mm -hmm. 6 p.m. here, but I'm still here. So, um, you're still in the office. The, the, the day was a bit long. This is a defining question for me. It defines my life, so to speak. You know, um, when I was in medical school, um, uh, many of us were thinking about leaving because of the context of tyranny, corruption, um, uh, limited opportunities, uh, lack of freedoms uh, under the Assad, the father. And, uh, you know, um, we many of us migrated, some to Europe, some to North America, uh, some went to the Gulf to work. Um, uh, I, I migrated to the US to pursue my training, um, thinking that this would be the best way of to make a life, uh, and make a future uh, for myself. Um, that decision turned out to have um, important consequences for my family because I was the first of three children who all eventually migrated out. So I'm perhaps um, speaking about a typical um, upward looking um, uh, a, uh, uh, member of a middle class family who thought that migration uh, um, you know, was a great answer to, to opening future path, but it came at a cost the cost of uh, dispersion, um, the cost of um, fragmenting the family, never getting together again as one nuclear family even for many years to come. And then when I wanted to, uh, when I finished my training uh, and was ready to go back to the region, I many of my colleagues did not want to go back to the region. They would have settled in, uh, in wherever they trained, uh, in Syria, in uh, Europe, in North America. I actually wanted to go back and I attempted to go back. Um, I went and met uh, with colleagues in uh, uh, back in Syria, I wanted to go back to Syria and serve there and open, uh, you know, um, work in uh, in the dual path that I still pursue, which is cardiology and public health. Uh, but I discovered that the doors were not open then. Uh, 
um, you know, those, the system of tyranny and oppression and lack of freedoms that I had uh, uh, left many years before uh, was still there, um, was still um, thriving. And I would have to either be part of it or struggle against it. And uh, this would um, this would have been too too difficult. Uh, uh, I didn't want to do that. So this is how I ended up in the neighboring countries of Lebanon, which is uh, Lebanon is just neighboring Syria. So I ended up working here, where I have access to the country, uh, uh, access to my family next door. Uh, but I don't live there. Um, Lebanon is a country that has a bit more freedoms, and I'm grateful that I have been given the opportunity to 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 be here. And uh, so this is, um, in, in perhaps a nutshell, my experience, own experience of migration. I have kind of two experiences uh, working with migrants. Like uh, my, I have been five months in this uh, in the in the refugee camps in Kios, in an island in in Greece. And there, the experience, as I told you, was um, for me was amazing. Uh, as amazing, not in, I mean, like something very shocking, no? Because I have never seen this reality in first line, like uh, what's happening so so hardly. No? But also here, uh, as I work in Granada, we have a big problem, and and, uh, and is that once that the people get, for example, for to here to Europe. In, in our case, most of the people, they, they come from, from Morocco. And we have in our neighborhood, there are some, some children, not children, ones that they, they are, uh, when they are minors, they are under the protection of the state. Sure. But once that they get 18, they have nothing. So uh, it's like a huge difference from, for these people that when they are under 18, they have a school, they have a house, they have food, they have someone uh, elder that they can have as reference, but once mm -hmm. that they get 18, they lose this uh, connection to, the, mm -hmm. to these old people. Mm -hmm. They lose, they, they, they cannot go back home for sure to, to their uh, hometown. Mm -hmm. And they have no permission to work or to, to rent mm -hmm. a house. And for sure they have no money. So mm -hmm. uh, these young people, and they are 18, I mean, they, they, are, they are very young. Yeah, to suffer all these things alone. No? So uh, now they are, most of them, they are living in, in our neighborhood, but mm -hmm. they never come to our, to the healthcare center. So what we, one of the part of my job with migrants, uh, like day to day more than, than what I did or what I'm going to continue doing in Greece, is just trying to try to, to ask them what do they need. I mean, try to make uh, the the healthcare system for everyone, not just for the one that uh, can comes every day with uh, with no problem because they are they are afraid that we're going to call the police. Where they are afraid because they don't speak the language. They are afraid because 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 so then and maybe they don't think that they have the right to come. So that's one of my the. It's not something. Uh, what I, every time that that, that I tell this is is just my responsibility. It's not something that I can consider special. It's just to take care of the community that you belong to. And in my community, these people are part of the community, and they're they're part of, of this. So I have a question for you, Blanca. When uh, you encounter migrants and refugees uh, in your setting, so uh, a bit far from where they. Came, uh, come from. I've always I've, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, uh, wondered how um, the background conflicts, uh, the the uh, the uh, the context where they come from, how they play out to you in front of you um, as a health provider there. Um, you know, I know you focus on health and rights and provision and all of that, but I, it, I'm interested to know how do the Afghani uh, refugees you see, you know, how do they bring, bring the, the realities that they have lived through, through their new lives? What, have, have you come across that, uh, that question before? Have you asked yourself that question? I have always many questions in my head to to everyone. So sometimes I I I know that 
for example, I, I want to ask many things for, for the people that they are in front of me, but I don't know how much is going to to remove things that the people they want to to tell again or to mm. or I don't know if some sometimes is if I'm going to ask something that uh, maybe I'm I'm hurting someone. So many times I try just to let the person in front of me tell me what they want and with this try to understand how much of the culture of the background they are uh, for sure this is going to affect your your life in all the sense because uh, you are in another place you you have uh, your you are missing things and this is not normally it's not a decision that you take because one day you want to try of course no i'm worried about this because sometimes i'm going to be the same healthcare giver for a long time so with these people i can continue or i can uh, if i know the person i can more or less uh, give the space for this person to talk or to to feel comfortable to explain but sometimes the problem with asking and um in the in the clinic is that if uh, that maybe the, the day after i'm not going to be the same doctor so i also don't want to to give um a person like a a safe space that is not going to be the day after how the situation is in spain because i know that you are also on the receiving end in spain not as much as greece or italy but you're also on the receiving end of uh, of steady flow of uh, of uh, 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 migrant workers forcibly displaced people all of that how is the situation there particularly um on the mediterranean side of spain uh, on the uh, uh, kind of southern mediterranean uh, the, is there still a steady flow of refugees and migrants coming through uh, your uh, southern shores yes there are migrants coming every day uh, to mo now most of them they go to to gran canaria that's uh, an island some island uh, in the south of spain mm -hmm. that's uh, far away from the from the main uh, land and this is one of the most risky and um, dangerous routes because the route between Morocco and, uh, and Andalusian and, and yeah. the south of Spain, now it's closed, let's say, because it's, uh, Europe and Spain is like uh, trying to, to stop people in Morocco the same as uh, it's doing in Turkey. So people have to go to, to, to more difficult and... Uh, a risky route so now they are coming through the island and the situation in spain now it's uh, quite uh, it's going to it looks like it's going to be like in greece in with the time because now people are stuck in the island so they don't have the permission to come to the mainland to even to work uh, even if you don't have the permission if you don't have the the the, the legal uh, authorization but you can do something but now there they have to ask for refugee status so we know that most of them, they are not going to get them because Spain or Europe consider that uh, it's not enough. No, So the situation is uh, very, very difficult in these uh, hot spots. People are, uh, they, they are attended by the Red Cross, but in communication with the public system. So uh, it's, they have the right to to be attended by people from the public health system for example talking about health um but is the red cross the one taking care of them so are uh, are uh, are people actually being returned from the island back to uh, back to northern africa from where they came theoretically uh, that's uh, theoretically they, they cannot be sent just after this uh, it's mm -hmm. illegal but what's happening is, is if they ask for, for refugee and for example, they are from Morocco and they don't have a, a big, let's say, quote, quote, because of course everyone's uh, have the, will, it will be amazing that everyone can go whenever you want or need and that's all, no? Uh, but uh, but now the situation is that after asking if, if maybe they, they go back to the, to mm -hmm. their, the place where they come from. Whenever we, uh, whenever we talk about uh, uh, migrants and forcibly displaced people, 
you know, uh, Syria uh, immediately uh, 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 jumps to mind because right now Syria is the um, uh, uh, the country, uh, the, so the source com uh, country of the largest number of refugees uh, uh, and internally displaced people in the world. You know, there are uh, probably uh, over six million refugees and over six million IDPs. Uh, from uh, uh, from Syria, so it's uh, it's the country that has produced the most IC IDPs and uh, which is internal displaced people internal displaced. and the, the most refugees uh, 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 over six million also in the world. So uh, uh, we've just uh, actually uh, written about the subject. We we just published a comment uh, from the commissioners of the Lancet AB Commission on Syria on the. 10th anniversary of the conflict and uh, what this means for uh, for health and uh, global health work. Uh, uh, by the way, I you know um, um, one of the things we do here is uh, we um, uh, in the, in the work of Syria is that we have uh, we have established in partnership with the Lancet this Lancet AB Commission on Syria uh, a few years ago, and uh, we've been working with them. Uh, on this topic, and this is how the uh, the the commentary came uh, came. Part of our training in medical school was that uh, during um, the summer we will go to one of the underserved areas of Syria, and I had grown up. You know, in the city Aleppo that I talked about earlier. This is a very old city. Um, so it has a, an urban tradition, a very rich urban culture in music, in uh, uh, in uh, literature, in uh, uh, architecture, in whatever. Um, now, uh, during one of the uh, medical school assignments, we went to uh, uh, we went to a uh, uh, the countryside of Aleppo. Um, so we're talking here um, about. 40, 50 kilometers away from Aleppo, and uh, and you know, a sh the, 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 this was a shocking moment uh, um, uh, to look at uh, um, the realities of those uh, different worlds. I mean, they were not just different wor worlds in terms of you know uh, uh, Aleppo being the richer urban center, while those only 50 uh, kilometers away, these uh, rural communities, poor um, 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 uh, poor infrastructure, uh, poor health conditions, uh, um, uh, houses made of mud and all of that. It really just uh, struck me as a medical student about um, how all of my medical education uh, was not about necessarily uh, uh, trying to help those people, we were just, you know, being taught in uh, in uh, in uh, kind of high tech uh, medicine, which is what medical schools uh, commonly they focus on physiology, uh, specialty uh, rotations, and all of that. Uh, and uh, that visit um, stayed with me because it was about exposing. Uh, 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 terrible inequal uh, inequities and inequalities that uh, I was not necessarily being prepared to address. So the um, what stayed with me from then was that it uh, if you um, if you want to struggle for health, um, you have to struggle uh, within yourself uh, to be part of that struggle. Medicine is. Uh, um, does offer a great window to the souls of the people you serve. It's a great privilege to to take care, uh, care of people. They open their secrets to you. They uh, they open their lives. They give you their their stories. They share their pains and all of that. Um, but it only really becomes meaningful if uh, if um, if you are. Um, willing to engage in those lives and engage um, in um, back on the, the those uh, uh, those realities uh, um, otherwise you know um, um, 
that the medicine does not fulfill its mission of being a relationship. I mean, medicine really is a relationship. Um, it's a relationship between not just necessarily a person who is a doctor and another person who's a patient, but it's a relationship between um, um, us community of providers and the community uh, community dwellers, uh, community members, uh, the community at large. How important is our work, and the same in the in the refugee camps in, in Greece, how important is just to be there because with uh, just taking uh, people coming to our, our sentence, how everything changed and how the people around us start thinking of Oh my God! Uh, they have this right, no? Uh, how how could I think that this right is something that we just have, not the other people? So just about pressing, 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 little by little, every day you make change around you. So here in in Andalusian, we we uh, the situation is that in theory there is a way to make everyone to have uh, the right to get to the public health system. So this. We, we are under this uh, framework in Andalusia and in Spain. There are a lot of limits, but there are always ways to jump over these limits. So with this framework, it's very easy that people say, no, uh, they, if they don't have the right, why, why do they come, no? Why, why do they ask why I can just say no go to the emergency room and that's all, no? So I remember uh, giving, for example, this, is, this sentence, like, there is the right, they have the right, they, they, they live with us, they have to come and they are, that, that's something like that, that, that is going to happen and we have to make it easy to happen and just put yourself in their position. Um, for example, with the people in, with who I work, that uh, as I got there, and me and other people, that as we got there, they were always saying, no, they have to go to this place and then from this place go to this and this and then make this paper and so and we were saying no, they have the right, they have the right. Put in their position. Imagine that you are here. Imagine that you don't speak the language. Imagine that you come here as someone tell you to go to a place that you don't know where is it. Imagine that you have the fear and that the, and you are scared that the police is going to catch you and send you back to to the place that where you have come from and and this and then. Uh, one day I discovered one of these people with uh, to who I was telling this, saying to another person, no, 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 they have the right. Uh, imagine that you go to a country because and you left your family behind and now uh, they say no to you. I think the focus um, of any person who's interested in health and rights is to really um, uh, ask the question of, what is it um, what is it that uh, your community um, uh, wants what what's wrong in what's happening there um, and what can you do as a health professional whether in your clinical practice uh, whether you're a health planner whether you're working on public health whatever it is what is it that you could do uh, to address it starting with a a, a question perhaps and it's an observation that you made and uh, uh, or a struggle you're having or a, uh, a pain that you have experienced. If you start from that, um, then you build on it. Um, the question um, um, might lead to a, um, uh, to a meeting or it, uh, it might lead to a, um, a collaboration and that collaboration can uh, give way to an intervention or a study or whatever it is. Now, frequently, um, the, the difficult part is the starting point, is that, you know, there is a lot of injustices around us, a lot of inequity, a lot of violations of rights, uh, a lot of exclusion. Then the real challenge is to um, learn how to recognize the question and um, and observe yourself recognizing and act on the observation. You know, uh, it's the same way as writing poetry. You know, um, poets are um, are better than you and I in that they could um, uh, observe themselves, observe the world. You know, 
uh, and uh, they document and they write down their observation of how they have observed this world and a, poet, a poem comes out. Um, in health, you would have to do the same. You would have to be cognizant that you're observing, uh, that you're uncomfortable with any observation that has injustices, exclusion, and all of that, and um, that you act on that observation that makes you uncomfortable, uh, even though the action itself may be uncomfortable. Uh, you don't know where to start. Uh, you don't know who to talk to. You don't know if others uh, are willing to work with you or walk the same path with you. Uh, but it always starts uh, with um, a. Uh, it starts with the with that observation, with that uh, with that recognition, and you build on it. I submit all the the, the conclusion and the message that uh, Summer gave, and just adding a little little thing is. Um, once that that you are able to open the eyes and to see and, and the ears to listen what's going around and, and that you understand what's going on and you can put yourself in the in the same reality and say, okay, what's my my paper here? What can I do with this that now I I saw and I know that it's happening? It's also to ask and to to look for people and and things that they had already done before. I mean sometimes we we get into uh, that when we discover a travel, we think that we are the first one that saw that. And sometimes it's uh, totally, um, there for sure someone that saw that before and that already did something before. Just take the, the knowledge of the people that work before and what is working the, and what the people is doing already in the community, not to erase it. So we, we will build more than if you if we do it alone or uh, from start from zero, no, that is the most uh, difficult part. Well, thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, this opportunity. This is the, I hope the start of friendship. So I look forward to interactions in the future. Thank you very much for for everything and for the invitation and for having this opportunity for health and justice. Good. <laughs>